Well, thanks for tuning in to Calm Down. I'm Neelaj Shah and with me is Devina and it, it's a really good day of trade. I don't think too many people anticipated this when trade started today that you would have banks leading the charge and be up 9% but Devina is just one of those days when skeptics have gotten proven to be wrong and uh, the world markets while they were in the green were not as strong. The strength in our markets is just looking very very strong right now. Neeraj and you know it's not a day where the broader markets are doing as much as what the main nifty benchmark is doing but that's all hands down uh, a contribution coming in from the nifty bank but they do have a few big movers as well Neeraj which have actually contributed on the upside uh, where you have the likes of Britannia that was locked up on upper circuit some time ago Nestle hitting live highs on the index and then the and, and the whole bandwagon of banking stocks which are up in double digits. I mean, you've got to take a look at Indus in Bank and the way that one has moved and the rest of the entire gamut of stocks that have looked strong. Maruti for one has started to uh, pitch in and all the auto stocks which are down and out. Pharma is the leader and the epicenter of the activity today as well. And the Nifty Pharma Index has not seen this kind of a move in over 19 years. So we're sort of breaking records out here. Yeah, we are. Quickly, let's mark the stocks that are doing well. So the Sensex and the Nifty doing well, 8% higher. The Nifty Bank, 9.7% higher. Really strong move. And banks it is which are leading the chart. So Indusin, 19%. Access Bank giving it company about 16%. There is ICICI Bank, 12.5% to 13% in trade. There is strength in Maruti Suzuki and Nestle too, about 12.5% apiece. And I must say, Pharma has not had a, that bad a day. Dr. Reddy, Sun Pharma, both of them have had double digit gains and at uh, the broader end of the spectrum too, things must be doing well. Last but not the least, just want to mark this, three names. One of them is HDFC Bank, really strong move in that one too in the session today. Reliance Industries is the other heavyweight which is doing very well for itself. So when Reliance and HDFC are up 9.5% apiece, very difficult for the indices not to do well. The only sore spot is Bajaj Finance and as a result of that Bajaj Fin serve but Bajaj Finance on a day like this is not contributing so well uh, certainly the con call yesterday giving people some reasons to be skeptical about the near term bounces so why wade into something that might have issues maybe go out and buy something that will probably have a natural course correction on the upside and maybe I'm guessing that at the broader end of the spectrum to while the indices may not be participating a lot of non nifty large caps have done really well. But they have Neeraj and I just want to put uh, you know Bajaj Finance here when we're talking about this one when the management themselves have come out and said that in the best case scenario they expect uh, you know 100 percent activity to kick in in September you know you'll probably even if you do find a rally and you, know, you do find yourself um, at the bottom starting to pick up you tend to veer towards other stocks which have given better commentary than Bajaj Finance so I mean, when you imagine themselves saying, wait, we've got September and that's the time that the best case scenario that we have, there is a lot of skepticism and also the question on whether the lockdown gets called off, whether the lockdown extends itself, all of that uh, plays out uh, on the minds of investors. But yeah, you're right, in the broader market space, a lot more movers, uh, the breadth of the market is extremely strong, 1300 stocks plus which are trading in the positive, 215 stocks in the red, JSPL. That one's up about 23 odd percent. Remember, we spoke to the management, and the management had said it's business as usual for them. And therefore, kind of action the stock is seeing. Pharma stocks, even in the mid tier basket, Marksons Pharma, 20 percent, Loris Labs, 20 percent. And then you've got a stock like Bodrej Properties. Um, you know, they've had their highest ever uh, sales and, and in value and in quantity uh, in, in, in any quarter. And that stock's up 15 percent. Aurobindo is up about 15% and Embic Pharma up about 13%. So it's Pharma all the way, Torrent Pharma 12% higher as well. Let me bring in Sachitan and Dutekar. He's joining in right now and what a day it has been. Sachitan, we were at 8,080 on Friday when we closed. Now we're 700 points higher, closer to that. Do um, you feel that this is still that the bear market rally that one should not get too excited about? Good afternoon, 
definitely not. In fact, uh, this is not. This does not look like a you know pullback move. In fact, uh, we are of the opinion that uh, you know whatever uh, swing that we saw uh, in this early part of uh, April series, uh, post uh, you know the rollovers which were on the lower side, uh, we saw a phenomenal jump from 7500 uh, levels to uh, 9000 levels, wherein uh, you know first signs of uh, an impulse wave characteristics were uh, witnessed uh, when it um, came to Nifty. Post that we saw a very healthy gradual correction, and uh, in fact, uh, this week uh, has been a truncated one. And this the the way uh, Nifty has moved above 8500. Uh, we are of the opinion that there's a there's a very strong uh, uh, undercurrent which is played out, and probably we may see a very strong extended move in the coming weeks. We are of the opinion that this particular move should extend right up to say 9700 and 97 kind of a zone. So probably you know this is a good chance wherein uh, some of the Uh, even large caps and high beta stocks should be accumulated now. Uh, in fact, uh, banking was one particular sector uh, which was uh, underperforming in the last uh, couple of trading sessions, and I think uh, this is a good time wherein uh, we may see a substantial jump or revival in Bank Nifty. So probably we may see a lot of uh, banking names of financials, you know, again taking a turn, and the uh, the aggression would be witnessed in uh, these coming days. probably you know uh, if 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 we really want to trade uh, something right away i think bank nifty is still giving us a very good uh, reward to this opportunity wherein some trades uh, or on the long term uh, can can be considered and deployed right away to expect bank nifty should see levels close to 20100 uh, within this particular rally in the next couple of trading sessions itself so from a positional perspective a, a stop loss should be placed at 18550 on a closing basis and some long should at we are expecting that this move uh, could eventually you know uh, extend towards 21000 21200 but as of now uh, as per the data which is con convincing enough that this particular move should come an 20 all right all right so today we come back and take your stock ideas as well but i think amar singh is also joining in right now on this discussion amar good morning good afternoon to you um, let's talk about levels if breached on the upside then this rally can actually extend itself much further yeah um a very good afternoon um, see what we've been witnessing in nifty over the last uh, i would say the major indices over the last few uh, couple of weeks i would say uh, because uh, in the last week of march it had made a low of uh, uh, 7 uh, 7500 levels and there currently around 8700 levels so definitely there has been a uh, an excellent uh, rebound Uh, so, uh, but on the daily chart, one of the indicators uh, clearly showed that uh, there was there's likely to be a positive trend because we've seen a significant correction from 12,000 levels to 7,500. Now, what's being indicated is that just, uh, if Nifty manages to sustain above 8,700 levels, then it has a potential to rally towards 9,300, 9,400 levels because uh, uh, the, the short-term indicators uh, have turned positive. So that's one uh, thing, but. i would still say that uh, be cautious uh, uh, on the on the long side meaning if you're long definitely look at booking profit if you get an opportunity uh, because uh, the uh, we are seeing some sort of volatility and also on the weekly and the long term charts they are clearly extremely negative even now so what it effectively means is that those who would be buying they would be looking at booking profits because uh, we are seeing uh, some very good returns in stocks uh, per se uh, so it will be and it will be extremely volatile as well because uh, Uh, looking at uh, the uh, uh, India VIX, if you look at India VIX, that uh, that has cooled off from 85 earlier. The uh, highs of 87 levels currently is around 52 or 53. So <clears throat> that also is around very crucial support Amar, uh, levels. Amar, I have a cross question. You, I heard you mention that you are advising booking profits. Where within the large caps are you advising booking profits? Are you looking at booking profits in an HDFC bank, Kotak Bank, in the large cap banks? Is it Reliance? where are you advising booking profits yeah i would say reliance definitely uh, one uh, can look at booking profits because reliance is one of the stocks which has moved into over uh, uh, bot territory if you look at uh, reliance uh, on the daily chart it's moved in over bot territory and uh, also on the weekly chart it's uh, it's very close to uh, key uh, resistance levels so clearly shows that there could be some profit booking coming in so uh, that's the reason i stated that because this thing one of the uh, bellwether stock it has rallied uh, post because it was trading below uh, 900 odd level so that's a significant uh, rally from 900 to 1200 odd level so that's a significant rally of almost uh, uh, 30% from the lows so so one should uh, uh, look at uh, booking profits in such stocks yeah 
Okay, what about specific stocks, Amar Singh? Uh, specific stocks, I would like to talk about uh, Apollo Hospital. This is one stock one can uh, uh, look at. Uh, uh, this also uh, has uh, uh, formed some sort of base because what we're seeing on the daily charts, there is uh, 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 our double bottom formation on the stock and also one of the uh, indicators clearly show that it has got strength. So current levels, one can look at buying around 1250, 1260, a zone with a stop loss of 1208 and a target of 13, 39 on the upside. But as I said earlier, one needs to definitely remember that this is a bear market, so the rallies would be uh, swift and fast. Uh, so it would uh, the markets would go in for some consolidation, and also India VIX has been pulled that much that it would uh, signify that the volatility has gone away. So one needs to be cautious as well. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, and Satchidanam is back with us, I think. So let's just quickly uh, get in his take as well and his calls right now on individual stocks. Satchidanam, what are you recommending? Are there more buys or do you recommend booking profits as well? Definitely, one should not look at booking profits. So this, as I said, you know, this is a fresh wave in motion and uh, the full type of momentum. Definitely not a good idea to book profits, especially the large cap names i think they should do uh, from here on if you look at uh, you know uh, banking as i said you know icsa bank is at a, a very good base so what we're expecting here is that the stock should see a movement towards say 350 355 zone in the next couple of trading sessions uh, probably a week or so uh, and from a trading so closing 308-305 would be very crucial. So I think this is a good time wherein a large cap name from the banking uh, side should be accumulated. Uh, we are expecting that uh, this move uh, should unfold in a couple of weeks time maximum. But uh, going in, it's a good time. ICC Bank should be a part of your trading portfolio as well. Uh, the other stock uh, which comes from the auto uh, Side, you know, uh, the, this, this particular space, that rate, it has still been negative uh, when it comes to Nifty Auto. But this is worst uh, uh, stock wherein there are signs of revival which have been seen. So if you look at the entire formation, uh, what we saw here is that uh, uh, it's in the last seven trading sessions, there were a lot of uh, uh, star formations on the daily scale. And uh, recently, in fact, today itself, we saw a, a substantial jump in open uh, along volumes and the price, which is indicating that there's a uh, there's a, a wave structure which is called as one two three pattern. I think that particular pattern has been unfolded. The pattern target is placed somewhere close to three forty. So from the autos, which looks downside, uh, three zero four should be stop loss, and three forty would be the expected target. Okay. That's uh, some of the stocks you need to watch. But auto also particularly has been doing great today, aside from pharma. In fact, uh, Amar Singh, I want to talk to you about pharma. Every other stock in the Nifty Pharma index is up in the green. Looking at the moves like stocks like Aurobindo Pharma, Cadillac Healthcare, Torrent Pharma, uh, Dr. Reddy, Sun Pharma. Uh, is this the next big leader uh, of the rally that could come about? Amar, that was for you. Uh, I would say looking at the pharma stocks, so what we see is that definitely the pharma uh, stocks have uh, rallied and it seems that uh, many of the stocks are still taking off uh, be the likes of Sun Pharma. Uh, because if you look at Sun Pharma, it has uh, from almost uh, recently 300 levels, it's around 420 or levels. So yes, there is a possibility and uh, uh, the, that uh, these stocks could rally. And if we look at uh, the uh, pharma index, uh, because uh, uh, that's where uh, the entire uh, action is, and that gives a very good indication. So that clearly is indicating that there is more upside currently it's around 8,100 odd levels, and uh, the, it had taken support around long-term levels. So it has the potential to rally towards 80, 8,500, 8,600 levels. So there is a four, five percent upside is uh, possible in in few of the pharma stocks from the current level. So yes, pharma can be looked as a buying opportunity. If you ask about specific stocks, then uh, in that case, uh, DV's laboratories, uh, definitely this continues to uh, outperform, and this is one of the stock one can definitely look at. I think the API players would stand to gain from what we hear from Bloomberg. I think the partial resumption of the 
uh, hydrochloroquine uh, exports uh, to US uh, might also start, which was put in a bit of a ban. So I think these companies might benefit um, as well. DVs is a large API player. I'm just using hydrochloroquine as an example, but all API players would probably stand to benefit if guys the other one. Neeraj Devan of Quantum Johnson right now with his thoughts. Neeraj, so good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. An opportune day as well. Um, just one quick thought on the markets before we move on to so many individual pockets as well. How do you look at this move today? Is this a bit of a bounce which will get sold into? Or do you believe this bounce can extend itself? Yeah, good afternoon, Neeraj. I think today's bounce is because of short covering which we are seeing today. I think it's happening across not only India, but the whole markets. So well, the markets last week were beaten down, it's really financial in India. They're beaten down and they were falling every day. So, you know, you in all the, you've seen whenever we have a bear market also, you see these bounce backs happening. So I think this is one of those bounce backs which may extend itself a bit because the kind of rally we're seeing across may take it further. But then I don't see that this is a bounce which will sustain and you know, that the downside is over and you'll see a sustained up move. I don't think this is that kind of a bounce back. This, at some point, this will also get sold in. Okay. Um, now, you know, the, the interesting thing, by the way, viewers, keep in mind that the Dow futures are not trading towards, uh, pointing towards a very big start on the green. In fact, they have slipped in the morning at about 7.30 a.m. or 7.30, 7.45 a.m. Dow futures were up about 200 points. Right now, we're trading very flat. Throughout the trading day today, the Dow futures have stayed very flat. So don't expect some miracles out there. Meeraj, um, there is a... There's an interesting view that we got today for some of the staple companies. Um, now, the likes of Nestle, the likes of HUL are trading at life ice, extremely expensive valuations as well. But the argument made in favor of those was that if, if, if there's one sector that is positively going to see demand, that's staples, and the companies which are so well established, like HUL, Nestle, are the ones which are actually able to withstand the pressures that will come in due to COVID-19. Some of the others might fall by the wayside as well. And therefore, the valuation gap between the larger ones and the smaller ones might only extend. What's your sense? Yeah, actually, you know, there are only two sectors which you feel right now, you know, based on fundamentals or based on whatever is happening around. And they are performing which have fundamentals attached to it. One is, of course, FMCG staples. And second is pharma. So there definitely is the stock like Nestle, the stock like Lever, and other stocks like Britannia, which is connected, or there'll be Tower and there'll be Goddess Consumer. So there are about five, six, seven stocks which you can count. These are definitely going because of some fundamentals, because there is definitely demand which, which even though short-term demand may fall because of whatever restriction, it will bounce back whenever things are recovering. So these are the first, this is the first sector to really bounce back. And most of these companies are cash rich companies, no debt on the books, and they have a high dividend payout also. So these three points will be very important for some time at least when you have the portfolio. Using the stock, you will be identifying stocks where you have cash on the books. You know, don't have a debt pressure immediate. You are definitely paying a large part of your, you know, uh, your uh, profit as dividend. Like what happened in ITC all. I see has been falling continuously for so many quarters now. But when they sometime back when they declare that they are going to change the policy to go up to 75, 80 percent of the profits has dividend payout. And the stock hit the bottom and start moving up. And from those levels, it's given a very good return in the last 10, 15 days only. So you know you will look at these companies only now for the short term. And and I think that is why you're seeing this kind of a rally in FMCG, even though some of the stocks are very sensitive on the valuation front. Mm. All right. Uh, you know, looking at that, uh, we've got to see the kind of valuations that we were talking about in the morning about ITC as well and how that is starting to move up as well. But the broader market space has a lot many more movers in the session. And JSPL being the one that's got gains of about 23%. A quick word, Amar Singh, what do you do with a JSPL right now, up 23%? Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, looking at uh, JSPL, uh, uh, the stock definitely uh, uh, has a, a bounce back uh, uh, today. Uh, because if you look at the stock has been beaten down significantly from almost 200 levels since uh, in the first week of February, currently around 78 or low, or, or levels. And uh, what we're seeing for the last three days is that uh, the delivery quantity has also been significant. And... Uh, 
and uh, and uh, there's been a lot of buying in, in interest in this stock. So yes, the stock uh, could would say that it, uh, it seems to have bottomed out and, and has taken support around 62 odd levels. On the upside, the stock could meet with resistance around the 85 to 95 zone. But the long-term trend still remains uh, negative for the stock. Okay, long-term trends negative. Um, the other one is Inox Leisure. Now, while we've had a few gains, there are also um, some losers. And Inox is the top of the Nifty 500 list, down 7%. Sachitanand, a quick word on Inox at 239. Well, uh, if you look at this entire pocket of lifestyle stocks, I think uh, there the pain is still evident, and I think you know one should stay away from uh, you know these stocks in case if if someone is holding even right now. I think it is placed at a very critical juncture. 240 on a closing basis remains very very important. Stay Capital level, probably we may see an extended uh, move towards a 290, sorry, 190, 195 kind of a zone. So definitely, you know, one should avoid uh, accumulating uh, such stocks. In fact, one this is one space wherein uh, you know one should not be aggressive, and uh, also should not uh, try to you know average any. Age. This particular should be a clear avoid, uh, at least for the next couple of uh, you know uh, months or so so definitely in case if you are having in your portfolio it's a good time to review it 240 if it is closed on uh, if it is uh, breached on a closing basis then definitely the downside will open right up to say 200 195 kind of a zone okay still there you know the, the... Uh, go ahead neeraj no no devina i was just you know wanting to first talk to you and then talk to neeraj devan as well about um, trying to assess which are the businesses that will likely uh, sustain this better, right? In the morning, Manish Sonthalia told us about uh, what could happen to, say, multiplexes, what could happen to uh, malls. It's it's a bit of an imponderable. We don't know when this will come back. But when you, when you just give simple thoughts to it, insurance, while Viva Patilikar mentioned that business, is right, business right now has gotten impacted, you have to admit that this is not a permanent damage to business. As soon as the lockdown is over, you will have agents scurrying back to households, taking the checks, making sure that business continues as normal. So there's no permanent damage to the model. There are no NPAs that come in this business. And therefore, wonder if insurance becomes that business that stays relatively unscathed and might see the first flight of money coming back because the business will show the first signs of coming back to revival once the lockdown ends. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. And that's uh, something that even Manish said, right? He said that uh, insurance and life insurance in particular have that edge. But, uh, you know, the bigger focus, uh, Neeraj, is what's happened to some of these NBFCs. And after the comments that came in from the Bajaj Finance Management uh, with regards to the best in the worst case scenario, I do want to bring in Krishna and ASV of SBI cap, tracks the BF, uh, the banking and finance space very closely. to be able to help uh, all those who probably wanted to invest in a Bajaj Finance or already have Bajaj Finance in the portfolio, make a better decision and more informed decision. Uh, Krishnan, uh, the, the biggest takeaway from you, for you from the Bajaj Finance Management Conference call uh, that they put up? Uh, yeah, hi. So, the biggest takeaway would be the fact that business is unlikely to normalize until October, right? So, even in a base case scenario, I think the first half is a washout. Uh, even in a base case scenario, according to Bajaj Finance, the credit cost is likely to be 50-60% higher compared to what they did last year, right? So, which would be FY20. So, the financial year 2020, compared to that, financial year 21 will be 50-60% higher credit cost, lower growth, and business would hardly normalize by maybe September-October. So, the first half is kind of a wash out. So, I think that's broadly how I think a base case will play out. And that's all assuming that, you know, we 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 hear the lockdown being lifted on April 14th. Now, for whatever reason, if there is evidence emerging that the lockdown extends further, then obviously you move towards other scenarios. Uh, but yeah, so that would be my largest takeaway because we all keep working scenarios in our own head. Uh, but yesterday it was quite nice to see that Bajaj was able to at least, you may or may not agree with each of those variables, how they think about when they will normalize. But I think it gave a very steady template to think about uh, 
which variables could reside in what range and when is the likely normalization under each scenario. Is this something that we can, you know, uh, uh, broad, do a broad wash in terms of uh, the rest of the NBFC pack as well? Because Bajaj Finance has started to be the bellwether there. It's, 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 uh, it, it's basically something and a company that was, you know, held out to be an all-weather company. And they are starting to uh, be on shaky ground. So what happens to the rest of the pack? And do banks then come in to buy some of their loans? Right. So, very obviously, Bajaj Finance would be amongst the very few blue chips in the NBFC space, right? So, if Bajaj Finance is going to face a problem, you can rest assured a lot of other NBFCs are going to be seeing hell. Um, so, I wouldn't be uh, uh, recommending NBFCs in a hurry to investors. I think investors will probably brace themselves for a period of underperformance from NBFC, and that could last anywhere from 6 to 12 months. Uh, as far as banks grabbing market the credit side is concerned, look, right now, I don't think disbursements or loans is a priority for any, any lender. Right? If I was running a bank today, I would first focus on whenever the lockdown lifts, can I intensify my collection efforts? Because remember, a lot of, uh, a lot of, I mean, borrowers will probably need help, uh, will probably uh, be running behind on their repayments. Um, so in that context, intensifying the collection effort and the collection infrastructure is far more crucial rather than focusing on incremental disbursement. Okay. Uh, so, Krishnan, just just one step back before I ask you the next question. Uh, you get blue chip financials at three times price to book or whatever the book may be eventually, only in times of crisis or uncertainty. Do you think these valuations of Bajaj Finance are pricing in the uncertain scenario and the, and the no business or very less business till September? Or do you reckon that uh, there could be still some more valuation pain? Uh, no, so I think uh, valuations will probably uh, react to emerging evidence. As I said, right now it seems to be pricing in that lockdown gets lifted either in phases or whatever after April 15th. Um, but today, if you were to tell an investor that we are probably staring at a two-month lockdown, then I'm sure that there is downside risk for a lot of for financials. Uh, even even the best in class, like an SDFC bank, Kotak Mahindra bank, nobody is probably bracing themselves for a two-month shutdown today, right? So I think with emerging evidence, if, if, so you currently probably position yourself for a 15-day lockdown or, or say, a 30-day lockdown. And if tomorrow, if that reality was to change, you'll have to reassess where the portfolio stands. If you are not to, would you believe these valuations are pricing in the negatives? For BAP, for HDFC Bank, for Kotak. I'm talking about the three of the names wherein nobody could find a fault until this drop. So, uh, is that for me? Yes, Krishna. Uh, so, I think yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean we, uh, I mean we have been recommending investors to add an HDFC bank and Kotak Mahindra bank at every weakness. Unfortunately, the weakness also persists, you know, for multiple periods of time, right? So, uh, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, would would we be recommending an HDFC bank and Kotak Mahindra bank to investors? Absolutely, yes. Uh, but that does not mean that down that there is no downside to these. I think you know in times like these, it's kind of non-linear and hard to predict. Uh, and so the only thing I would worry about in maybe where a Bajaj Finance will be different from say Kotak Mahindra Bank would be in the fact that Bajaj Finance is a 35% kind of a growth machine, right? That has not happened on the back of just salaried customers. And you know that this kind of environment where you are 
out of business for 30 days and you were just discussing what happens to malls, multiplexes. So a lot of these customers are not salaried, are self-employed. So Bajaj Finance customer profile is very different. And hence, the income shocks will be different. And so I believe Bajaj Finance will probably have asset quality concerns more than maybe a bank, uh, maybe Kotak Mahindra Bank. It is not about whether it is secured or unsecured. I think it's more about whether that customer can handle an income shock. Yep, and that's the reason why probably, uh, you know, the market is digesting all of these factors and, uh, you know, the, the disproportionate uh, investor interest in banks, particularly versus some of these NBFCs. Krishnan, thanks very much uh, for joining in. Appreciate you taking out the time to talk. Thank you. Neeraj Divan, just want to come to you then. Uh, you know, while this whole conversation uh, revolves around financials, is there anything else that you feel oh, there is a possibility that leadership can emerge from there? When we're talking about uh, the fact that China is now uh, coming out of a lockdown, uh, do you feel that there could be uh, an impact on metals or other cyclicals for that matter? That is too early to say that because we, till now we don't really know what kind of impact it will have on the economy and for what period of time. And we don't know if the lockdown will continue across the world for, for what kind of a period. You know, so these questions are still unanswered. I think the only sector, like I mentioned, only two sectors, FMCG and pharma. Pharma is one sector which is again emerging back as a leader right now. And we've seen the pharma underperforming for quite some time. And but last few days now pharma is coming back. So pharma is one space where I think leadership will continue. Besides that, you know, whether it's metal, whether it's you know, other commodities like cement, there's definitely you know, there is a valuation argument there that they are available at valuation which they never been available at. Even cement is tested a lot, but then the impact, so, you know, we, it's, it's still early to assess the impact which will have it will be there on the economy. And when the demand will come back for, for metals or cement or related sectors, it's something which we can only guess right now. Because we've not seen this kind of environment, and the impact can be longer than what we've been anticipating or already pricing it, but it can be shorter also. So I think it's too early for me to take a view on some of these, you know, sectors, quality sectors like a metal or a cement or economic, you know, economy-related sector. So I would rather now see how things stand and then take a call with that. For the time being, I'll stick to the defenses where I feel and the pharma sector where I feel the company has, you know, solid balance sheets so they will sustain, survive this kind of onslaught and demand is going to come back very fast to those, uh, those kind of industries. All right. Uh, Neeraj, just stay on with us. Uh, you know, we've been getting a lot of uh, queries as well, um, you know, uh, asking us whether or not a few of these stocks uh, provide value propositions. And for one, uh, we have uh, Srinivas Rao who wants to know whether SBI cards at current valuations is a good bet to be in. Now, we know discretionary spends have been coming off. SBI cards has put out their uh, clarification as well as the impact on quarter four. There was an initial spike on online groceries, but that is also starting to come off. Now, would you suggest that if you, you were ready to buy SBA cards at 755, now available sub 600 is a good bet, Neeraj? See, again, you know, uh, you know how many people are going to get salary cuts? What kind of expenditure pattern we'll see after this kind of a fall in the, you know, economy as such and the kind of income levels which go fall for some time. So it will not you will get an opportunity. I'm not saying that you have to buy a SBI card today. I don't know whether it's made a bottom or not. I think it can it can still uh, you know it's still early to say whether what kind of growth can come back to SBI card or what kind of expenditure pattern you'll see going ahead. There are going to be a lot of change because of this. It is, it is not a very simple thing that there was a disruption and Tomorrow, everyone will be just, be, be just getting up, going to jobs, being the same kind of income, same salary. They start spending lavishly again, using their credit cards. That is not going to happen. According to my understanding, that will take some time. So there's no hurry to buy something. So I like LBA cards. I like the franchise. There's no, there's no district stock in that same category in India. You get a premium valuation, but it takes some time for that. So it's not, so, it's not going to happen so soon. 
Neeraj, we leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this afternoon. We've got a few more queries coming in. Uh, Fals Ansari wants uh, an opinion on DMA, Trent, and PI industries. Are they good buys? Amar Singh, I'll take it to you. Uh, do you feel that at this point, any of these stocks uh, look like they're worth a buy? I mean, uh, Avenue Supermarts has not been giving you an entry point, I think, in the last two or three days. It's today also up on upper circuit. But Trent, uh, is it a value buy at these current levels and PI industries? Yeah, uh, looking at uh, uh, trend, what we are seeing is that uh, uh, the stock uh, is uh, currently uh, uh, trying to form a bottom after hitting a low of 360 forward levels. Currently, it's around 455. Uh, so, yes, one can look at uh, uh, buying the stock because the stock uh, on the long-term chart still continues to remain positive. And the other stock uh, which you uh, asked about, uh, PI Industries, if I if I look at this uh, uh, particular stock, so. Uh, this also the long-term trend for the stock remains positive, and uh, but the stock is now approaching crucial resistance zone somewhere around 1350, 1360 or levels. So at the current levels, I wouldn't recommend buying the stock. But on dips, yes, the stock seems to have definitely formed a bottom. So dips towards 1200 uh, odd levels, 12, uh, 20 levels can be used as a buying opportunity for the stock. I think the last query that we can take this afternoon is from Saurabh Nima. Uh, wants a view on Bandhan Bank and what's the reason why we're seeing so much weakness in the stock? Uh, you know, obviously the stock has seen some pressure. Uh, you know, they have they they don't have very uh, bulk account lending. They have smaller niche uh, targeted lendings that they do, and you know their their profile as well. Their customer profile is also uh, you know something that we were just talking about with Krishna which is similar, the small ticket uh, loans that they put out. So that could probably be one of the concerns for Bandhan Bank as well. Uh, but uh, a quick word, uh, Sachitana, Bandhan Bank. Well, Bandhan, I think, uh, you know, clearly it should be avoided. Uh, I think there are better banks uh, which are placed at a good value zone. Even there, there are signs of you know, bottoming out, ICICI Bank being one of them, even uh, to the tune of, you know, photo Bank and Access Bank are also placed at very good uh, levels. So I think Bandhan Bank, you know, uh, it has been on the weakest, uh, one of the weakest stocks. And even uh, at this current juncture, there are no signs of uh, bottoming out. So probably we may see some more slippages. I think the level uh, which we have seen so far are on the downside around 152 that level may be revisited and we may see some more slippages below that but definitely not a counter uh, which can be accumulated right now i think there are better opportunities which are presented in the market so i would strictly avoid uh, you know taking any long uh, positions in bandhan bank dharmesh khan joins in and the last time he gave a call it's turned out to be really good dharmesh good having you thanks for joining in on the button when it came to buy in the dip my question is do you believe this is sustainable and therefore let's say for example the metal names this bounce that we're seeing, uh, China resuming, Wuhan is back to normalcy. Do you reckon that the upsides into some of these metal names mm -hmm. can happen? And can you fundamentally make a case for buying into a, a Hindalco, a JSPL, a, a Tata Steel for that matter? Yeah, good afternoon, Neeraj. Yeah, definitely. See, this is a very strong, you know, rebound which we are seeing in the market. and. Uh, Usually everything bounces back, which has been sold deeply into. And fundamentally, they were good companies. There's nothing wrong with, you know, uh, JSW Steel or Hidalco to see. Uh, I think China has already started, you know, uh, production of the factories are opening up there. And as the thing normalizes in the U.S., uh, then the activity will pick up in a big way. India, you know, fortunately, we were saved from uh, maximum damage as far as, you know, uh, coronavirus impact is concerned, and we thank God for that. At the same time, if it is contained here, and the type of damage which has been done in the equity market is unprecedented, we fell much more than what a European or a US indices fell. So, I think it's normal for our market to you know climb back equally faster on a you know good global condition. The next uh, 10 days will you know justify that. I personally believe and firmly believe that we have seen the bottom. I mean, next two months, uh, any correction in the market has to be bought into. And um, um, I mean, metals will also be a part of uh, this uh, leadership, Larry. So uh, to answer your question precisely, Hendalco and GSW Steel are the two topics uh, in the metal space. 
Darmesh, now I want to ask you about names which were stronger in, in, in the move at the broader end of the yeah. spectrum and have corrected and whether you can buy them. So uh, there was uh, there's this whole internet-based businesses and I actually want to focus specifically on InfoEdge, but you can choose to take some of the others like Apple India also. But if you want maybe InfoEdge and a view on the back-end manufacturing stocks, if China supplies are resuming, which means that these companies when the Indian lockdown ends, will not have a shortage of spare parts. Uh, it is a very strong pocket before this correction started. Do you think it will draw investor interest? So back-end manufacturers and InfoEdge. See, you know, InfoEdge will have its business as usual, not now, I mean, a couple of months later on. Uh, but, you know, IT, you see, there are a few sectors which will take a central stage in this uh, new norm. One is the IT companies, and IT companies where augmented reality is taking a center stage. So you had first data processing, then you had business intelligence, which moved to artificial intelligence. And now the new niche area is augmented reality where you can do business setting wherever you are, maybe from your mobile app. And that is the area the companies which capture that first will be the you know biggest mover. InfoEdge and all the you know, traditional businesses, I mean, they are not producers of any software or technology. They are just you know service providers. So I don't see much merit out there. Even the valuation I wish it was trading was pretty much cheap because of the current market condition when others were selling off, you had a margin of safety out there. So I don't think that will attract a buying interest. I am very hopeful on, uh, I mean, Infosys or TCS. If either of the two comes out on a platform or a software with augmented reality, so that would be the new edge for the IT stocks. Uh, as far as you know, internet is concerned, data will play a big part, and there Bharti and Reliance Jio. I mean, these are the two companies which are left as of now to be realistically speaking. So both of them will gain from it. And the third space, I mean, back-end manufacturing, I am doubtful on the Indian space uh, for the back-end manufacturing. Because whatever was, you know, the opportunity which uh, the so-called uh, was, uh, uh, you know, cited because of China lockdown is no longer there. And it was never, it would have been never been there because uh, setting up a manufacturing facility in all takes a much longer period of time. And China already had a facility. It was just a matter of, you know, things getting back to normal, which they have done uh, remarkably well. So but that will take a back seat. Automobiles and all people may be, you know, I mean, auto ancillary part, people may be getting bullish just because of the valuation part, but I think it should, it will be maybe at a bounce back. There won't be any meaningful rally this year. I mean, the entire 2020 calendar year will be going to a waste. So no auto buying, no pharma buying. Pharma is again just a trading blip because look at it from this perspective. Medicines, it's anticipated that if uh, some antidote or some, you know, uh, medicine comes to contain this virus, the company which comes first will benefit, not the entire space. And beyond that, the business will be as usual for the pharma company. So why buy a pharma company? I mean, this rally was just a marginal safety kind of a rally which you had and it will fizzle out. Better buy insurance companies from the financial space, which will still have a much better life. So to my mind, it is the insurance companies, it is the IT companies, which will be, you know, augmented reality kind of a stuff which the companies are doing. And to a certain extent, chemicals will do well, like Vinati Organics or Apedilite, all these companies can still continue to do well as RF of the world. And to a certain extent, metals. Okay. Uh, in fact, I want to dwell on the insurance point a bit more, but in, a bit, in, in some time, because the markets now are up 9%. The Nifty is up 9%. That's 8,800. And that's thanks to Reliance Industries because that one is just um, you know leading uh, from the front 108 points to this con to this rally so from 725 points 110 points comes in only from alliance industries and another 93 points from hdfc bank 70 points from icici bank infosys 55 points so uh, more than 50% of this rally uh, that you're seeing on the index is contributed by just the top 6 7 names uh, that you're seeing right now uh, and they too a bulk of it are from the banking pack and Reliance Industries doing its best. But uh, coming back to what dealing groups are recommending this afternoon, Darshan Mehta is joining us with that. Uh, Darshan, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Devina. And uh, certainly it's a day in which uh, some of the select uh, FNCG and pharma stocks uh, have done well. No doubt uh, it's the banking factor that has done well. 
But a uh, couple of stocks, uh, even though dealing rooms are light, uh, in which dealers indicated that there was activity. <clears throat> One of them is Apollo Hospitals, which is up almost 7 to 8% the last time I checked. Uh, they indicated uh, uh, two days ago there was a 52 week low that was hit on the stock. Post that for the past two trading sessions, that is Friday and today, uh, some of the large domestic funds are actively accumulating the counter, and that's something that they're watching out for. Uh, Britannia is the other one. While you saw counters like Nestle and HUL rally significantly, uh, the underperformance came in from Britannia. Valuations also much lower than the other two. But uh, today seems to be a catch up day for Britannia. It's up almost 10% in today's trade. So there is traction happening and catching up to the underperformance that it had on the other FMC GPS. And DV's lab is up another 10% in trade today. A uh, lot of positive news coming out on the pharma space, <coughs> especially. Uh, with the export of API, there seems to be a lot of hurry by some of the countries at least uh, to start importing, uh, you know, API uh, businesses and, and DV is certainly the largest company in India uh, that is catering to the export market and the API business. So that is something in which they are seeing traction. All right. Uh, Darshan, thanks very much for that. Um, you know, before I actually go ahead and before we get you some more uh, market commentary, a quick word, and since we were on the topic of insurance, Dharmesh Khan, would you be a buyer in life insurance companies or general insurance? Life insurance companies, uh, SDSC Life and uh, SBI Life. Uh, general insurance, uh, not now. Oh, okay, got that. Well, uh, let's get you a big market voice then. Manish Suntale of Motilal Oswal AMC believes that the markets uh, have bottomed out. Speaking to us earlier on in the day, he says investors would be better off investing in tranches rather than in lump sum amounts till the virus fears complete. Listen. You know, we are somewhere closer to the bottom and probably the 7,111 which we saw the other day, uh, you know, was more or less a near-term bottom that we have seen in the markets. I think the financials remain vulnerable, but the rest of the pack in the market uh, is more or less, uh, you know, so well priced in terms of margin of safety that we are putting the entire money to work. If you remove financials, uh, that's 37% of the basket or 35, nearly a third of the basket gone out of consideration. So where is it that you're deploying that 35% within the framework? I mean, where? what is funding the lion's share of the deployment currently? So we are actually buying financials also, but uh, suffice it to say that we are actually underweight on financials. And currently we are not deploying the 37% which represents the index. Probably we are deploying in financials to the extent of 27, 28% only. So that's a good 10% underweight on the financial sector. And within the financials, it's the, you know, the stronger private sector banks which have a decent CASA, which has good uh, liquidity position and good, uh, you know, uh, capital position. I think uh, when this whole uh, thing gets over, uh, the banks would be in a, in a much better place in terms of the risks to reward. Uh, and that's the place where we are actually deploying capital. Manish, we'll come to specifics in a bit, but I'm just wondering, because it's been uh, on my mind for the last couple of days, when you look at financials too, do you reckon that now the case for the non-lending financials becomes even more stronger because the possibilities of asset quality disruptions at least will be much lower irrespective of what happens to business because that's, own, I mean, that's something that we can only ponder over, not quite predict with certainty. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the non-lending financials, which includes asset management companies or let's say, uh, you know, uh, broking houses or let's say the insurance companies, they have a bigger margin of safety. So a portion of the allocation within the financials also goes to uh, insurance companies per se and some broking companies. That's how we are looking at it. Asset management companies, I don't really think the, uh, the listed entities that we have have really some degree of margin of safety even at these prices. So we're watching this space, but we are looking to buy them only at lower valuations, not at current valuations. What's your advice to uh, investors who are looking to deploy money right now? I mean, there's a difference between uh, you know, having a mandate to invest all the money that you get and for a person who has the choice to invest and is deciding whether or not to come in at an appropriate time into the markets to know and whether there is a possibility of some telltale signs that a bottom is getting put in place. Anything that you can advise on? 
so you know in the past also what we have seen is that uh, when there is total risk aversion in the market the prices that you get on the screen you know appears to be that of uh, you know fear and currently we are in that sort of a situation there's total fear in the markets uh, and uh, you know the prices to value equation has totally got out of sync uh, if you were to consider fi 22 and beyond and from that point of view you know the valuation margin of safety is very very conducive of course if people or investors are you know uh, quite shaky at this given point in time maybe the best possible course of action is to deploy through uh, you know tranches rather than going all out in one tranche but uh, you know if you were to deploy some capital at this stage uh you know it would stand to your benefit uh, these things will op- only appear to be opportunities in hindsight well that's manish sondhalia for you and some ideas discussed with him as well there seems to be a bit of a consensus when it comes to life insurance players for sure so do watch out for them and then aside some of the other names that he recommended now before we move any uh, talk about any specific ideas let's get in some closing strategies from our experts I won't be surprised if it's a financial name, but let's ask them. Uh, Amar Singh, your top closing strategy today. Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, one can look at uh, Berger Paints as well. Uh, this is one stock uh, which uh, uh, has uh, seems to have formed a bottom. So this is one stock one can definitely look at. It has the potential to rally towards uh, uh, 495, 500 odd levels, and has got very strong base coming around 400. What about you, Sachit Anand? Your top closing strategy? Well, I'll uh, focus more on the metal pack. And in fact, if you look at the uh, movement of Tata Steel in the last 15 trading sessions, you know when we saw the first circuit on 13th of uh, March, you know since that day, the stock has not uh, closed uh, below the 270 uh, mark uh, more than two days. If you look at the entire construction, it looks terminal move so probably we may see a reversal here uh, i am expecting that this move uh, should extend right up to say 295 300 kind of a zone so again a positional long out here the stop loss for the same should be kept at around 268 on a closing basis and tata steel would be uh, one of the preferred picks uh, from the middle name now uh, ramesh we, we we spoke about bandhan bank i want to talk about one more financial name pitamal enterprises Uh, somehow not quite able to leg up and with real estate being in the kind of pressure that it is uh, would you recommend that if somebody has it in the portfolio to get out of that stock and invest that balance into some other quality name or would you recommend staying put with pinnacle enterprises currently no the guy would recommend uh, the investor to switch from pinnacle enterprises to a quality name in a private sector place maybe hdfc bank or icic bank Uh, they can buy it because uh, Pinamal Enterprises has its own set of problems, and that, that those set of problems are going to aggravate going forward. Uh, it's a long drawn battle for them. Uh, I don't think in haste or you know in near future it's going to uh, it will settle down and uh, some more you know uh, prices to be paid to come out of the situation, which will be a difficult one for them. So uh, switch to ICIC Bank or HDFC Bank. Great perspective, Amar Singh. Very quickly, Pinamal Enterprises. Pinamal Enterprises. I would say that uh, one uh, is overall uh, we are seeing some pullback, but the stock seems to have uh, selling pressure around 1,000 odd levels for this for this stock. Okay, watch out for Pinamal out there. Uh, fundamentally, still uh, not a stock to be in. Rather, shift out and move into the likes of. A few quality banks, according to Ramesh. Uh, the other one is, uh, you know, some of these uh, uh, stocks, uh, these big gas distributors. Uh, they were in the limelight. I think quarter three, quarter two, and quarter three. Uh, these were uh, quarters where they really delivered in terms of earnings as well, and therefore uh, the kind of excitement around these stocks. Now, would you still recommend uh, that there would be more interest there, and therefore stick to those stocks, city gas distributors, Ramesh? Yeah, definitely yes. Uh, because these are long-term plays. One should not be, you know, trading in and out of these uh, companies, be it IGL or MGL, uh, so or a Petronas Energy. You have to keep them in your portfolio. And if you are, 
They're willing to hold it for three to four years, a good 20% kind of a compounding you can get on the stock price as well as on the earnings part. Because the area is still very underpenetrated, I mean, uh, the levels to which these uh, the customer points, all the touch points where these companies have to reach is humongous. So a uh, very vast field open up for them. It's a capex intensive business, so it will take its own uh, due course of time. But uh, as far as the growth and the you know profitability is concerned, it's a given for them. So one has to, if you, it's a must portfolio buy uh, from my end. Okay. Portfolio by there for city gas distributors. Uh, you know, anything else? And uh, we, Dharmesh, we've been getting a lot of queries on a stock like Relaxo. What would you do with this one? I mean, it's been touted to be a stock that you need to hold in your portfolio for a long term investment. Uh, the management has been pretty ahead of the lockdown, obviously, and ahead of the coronavirus pandemic becoming as uh, grave as it has. The management was pretty confident about, uh, you know, its own uh, position to meet demand. Um, it said that it's going to start new factories and uh, you know scale up and and even their price points are attractive enough they're catering to the mid class the mass segment and therefore volumes are likely to pick up do you feel that this is a stock to have in the portfolio yeah yeah so i mean there's nothing wrong with the company is just uh, uh, i mean because of the plain scenario uh, the sales are not happening the moment it opens up and they are in the entry segment of the market uh, which is a mass uh, conventional market uh, market out there for them. So they will have their own market share. Uh, but given a choice between Bata and Relaxo, so I would prefer a Bata rather than a Relaxo uh, just because of the pan India reach of the Bata. And uh, once a dynamic person takes over, you know, Bata, so there is nothing which Relaxo does which a Bata can't do. And if the Bata does the same thing, I mean, the type of variance which Relaxo is there, which Bata has already started. Then we actually will have a real fight uh, coming in from a much larger and a better player in the form of Bata. So, in order of preference or weightage, I will give weightage to Bata. But if somebody is having the Lexo, they can continue to hold so. Nothing wrong out there as far as the company is concerned or the business is concerned. Would you buy IRCTC Dharmesh if it opens? <laughs> uh, it's not given you an opportunity from 800. But if it does open up, if the circuit does open up, would you buy it? Yeah, definitely, yes. Again, nothing wrong with the business. Uh, you were buying at much, much higher level, so why not now? And you see, all the trains which they have rolled, one of them has already broken even before this lockdown was there. So it's a complete monopoly kind of a business, be it ticketing is concerned, or you know, any business you should want to do through railway or as far as food and beverage is concerned, it has to go through that. And the charges, the commission which they charge, the concession fee is a complete monopoly. A small tweaking in cons concession fee can lead to your 10%, 15% kind of earnings uh, jump straight away. So uh, it's a good opportunity to, you know, again, uh, get back to ICTC in your portfolio. You can. <laughs> Let's start wrapping up the market. Tarmesh, take a moment to thank you for joining in today. Really appreciate your time. But here's how the markets are shutting shop. Banks all the way, all the way. The bank nifty up a healthy 10.38%. Indescent Bank 24 or 25%, Access Bank about 21%. There is strength in uh, ICICI Bank, there is strength in uh, Reliance and Lustries. That one is up about 12.33%. There is strength in Nestle, Bajaj Auto. Essentially, everything is up, but Bharti Airtel is up 10% too. I must say, I think there are about 20 names, 15 to 20 names, which have double digit gains to themselves in the session today. Uh, the only one actually not even a single stock in the green in the in the red power grid is the worst performer up up about just a percent whole india and bajaj finance follow suit itc and adani ports are lying a bit soft but that's okay the ones which have fallen the most and ones which are really strong both of them today are moving up in tandem hul at 2459 is closing in at life highs it's almost as if devina the covid 19 impact has I mean, there's, there's just no business impact for HUL as a result of COVID-19. Yeah, and then you've got Britannia also at uh, live highs. You've got Nestle at live highs. I mean, uh, it seems as if, and, and that's the case, right? Everyone talks about how you want to stock up and how you want to buy staples at least. So uh, consumption not really getting uh, beaten down too much, actually. But then that wasn't the question as to when the next rally starts. Do these consumption stocks participate then? 
because they're any which way so steeply priced and they've not really corrected as much as the rest of the pack has. So, you know, in that, 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 that debate is left open on the table. But aside from that, uh, the broader market space, uh, you've got JSPL 30% higher in today's session. Uh, you've got the likes of a Gujarat Alkali's 20%, Marxons Pharma 20%. Aurobindo 16.5%, InfoEdge 16.5%, Godrej Property is 15%, Cadilla 14%, everything is up. Pharma has taken complete charge in today's session. Sale is up 13%. Then you were the likes of, uh, um, uh, you know, Loris Lab, Mutu Finance, Park, uh, the uh, likes of an Ipka Lab, 11%, uh, Rallis India, Sun TV, everything's doing well. They do have losers as well. So, Inox Leisure, uh, it closes the day with losses of 8%. Gati is down, Edelweiss is lower circuit. The future group stocks are under, both consumer and retail. Zlearn is under by 3%. And then you have the likes of the Sadhbab Engineering. I think Barun Beverages, Pandana Spurti, some of these names also looking relatively weaker uh, in this time. But uh, let's um, you know, quickly get you some closing comments from both our technical experts as well before we wind down. Let's start off with you, Sachit Anand. After today's big bang move, what is it that we need to watch out for trade come tomorrow? We didn't close at 8,800, just a smidge uh, under it. I think uh, the next level, uh, you know, this is the barrier wherein uh, we saw a swing on 27th of March when it registered a higher from uh, 9038. So that was the swing of the first impulse that we saw from which started uh, from the bottom of 7511, you know. So this will be an interesting zone for the market in the next couple of trading sessions. So it has been a truncated one and we have an expiry. Uh, if you look at the options data, still, you know, 9000 uh, call writers are still at. So it will be very interesting to see how this particular level is negotiated. But uh, definitely, you know, one should uh, be more on the optimistic side itself. And uh, until unless we don't see a closing below 8,300 from here on, I think the trajectory and the trend uh, should be uh, more on the uh, bullish side itself. And when it comes to momentum, I think that momentum will still amplify once we see a breakout above, say, 9,040 in the coming trading session itself. Okay. Amar Singh, your thoughts? Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, the closing for Nifty has been uh, positive and the short-term indicators are also indicating that there is further upside to Nifty towards uh, 9100, 9200 odd uh, uh, levels. So ideally, there is a uh, there is a possibility of those levels being reached. Uh, but uh, one definitely, as I said, needs to be cautious because the long-term indicators are still extremely negative. So we would witness profit booking on the downside. Now, Nifty has got very strong support coming around 8200, 8300 zone. Okay. okay, we leave it uh, as that. <laughs> no, Devina, just, uh, anyways, yeah, even I wanted to thank, but I just wanted to also mark that. Uh, Amar and Sachidan, and thanks so much for joining in. But, you know, I just wanted to mark, Devina, the turnover in the session today. And it's, I mean, the cash market turnover has looked very robust on a day like this. I'm really interested in knowing towards the close of day today as to what are the FI numbers, because thus far, we've seen a healthy cell number coming in for most days. But look at the turnover today. NSC cash is over 50,000 crores, Devina. So there arguably has been some bit of cash market buying that has happened in the session today as well. Yeah, yeah, there has been. And, uh, you know, and, and these are the days that you really look out for in terms of queues. Volatility has come down sharply as well. So the last time we took a check on India Wakes, it was somewhere around 50. I don't know, by the end of the trading session, it probably could have fallen further. But today's day was a good day for the volatility coming off as well but uh, that's all that we have here i want to thank both our experts summer as well as Sachitan, for joining us this afternoon and from Miroj, myself and the entire team that's put the show together thank you so much your future is here. Andhra Bank and Corporation Bank are now Union Bank of India.